Pop Current's exclusive sponsor is Bakersfield Heart Hospital. Welcome back to Pop Kern. I'm Karen Hua, and we've hopped on over to Northwest Bakersfield. We're here at the home and garden of Callie Beckwith. You and your husband own A3, yes. a local gym, right? Yep. But this is your side project. Yes, the passion project. Tell me a little bit more about how it started, how it bloomed, if you will. Yeah. We eat organic, so I wanted to save some money. And I assumed growing food would be a lot harder than it is because not everyone does it. I found YouTube videos and books and I just sort of taught myself along the way. It's grown to, we have about 4,000 total feet of growing space. Holy moly. Over 55 fruit trees, over uh, 40 edible shrubs. What I really learned is that if you create the ecosystem, you let nature do the work. And so I use a lot of permaculture principles, which just sort of means do nothing gardening. Uh, Which is why your Instagram handle is <laughs> The Neglectful Gardener. <laughs> yes. I spend less than a couple hours every month. We finally come into the back and we've emerged basically into a jungle, you called it. Yes, the food forest. The food forest. So, so in a matter of three years, you grew all this. Yes, and one of the, the secrets is to buy bare root fruit trees. The younger your tree is, it will grow faster, it will be healthier. I love it. I want to really explore what you have here. What are we standing under so right now? So this is passion fruit. Amazing. Um, what do we have here? These are Asian pears. I feel like I have not seen Asian pear really growing organically, naturally. It is so expensive at the grocery store. Right. This was a $25 bare root tree, and within a second year, I've got, you know, pears. And I mean, we we have new fruit every season because of this method of keeping this tree small and manageable. So, I mean, nectarine, apricot, plum, pluot, cherries. That's amazing. And really, we talked about capitalizing on this Bakersfield heat. I think a lot of people, they believe that growing and gardening really is for summer and spring, but right. we, we do live in warm climate year round. Yes, this is the first year that, we've, that we completed a full cycle because um, pomegranates are in the winter, persimmons are in the winter. So our compost bin is one of the most economical ways to make healthy soil. Trying to be more green in 2020. Yes, but this truly was food from our house and scraps from the garden. Yep. And they sort of decompose themselves into this more nutritious soil, is that right? Yes, so everything will break down eventually, but the more you stir it and the more regularly you add water and keep the pile moist, the quicker it'll turn into this. The tomatoes, and I just harvested 26 pounds of tomatoes. What and do you I, do with 26 pounds of tomatoes? I actually made spaghetti sauce. So we have eggplant and peppers and leek. How do you sort of deal with it when not everything works? How do you make sure everything really does grow? Yeah, so you don't, but you plant more than you need and then you're never disappointed. Okay, yeah. So another tip is to use a lot of biodiversity. So plant like eggplants here, but also there and one squash here along with there. So if something wipes out one crop, you don't lose everything. So we have these babies here, which are so plump. Oh. Wow, how do you eat figs? Uh, we eat them raw. I don't think I've ever had a raw fig before. Really? Yeah, they're... <laughs> mm. These are beautiful, these are green grapes? They are, they're Thompson seedless. And you notice they're smaller. When you get these at the store, they're so puffed up on mm -hmm. these pesticides that they're, I feel like I've seen grapes this big. This is I, the real size of grapes. Yes, this is the natural version. You can make one. Yeah. Um, Wait, hold up. Can we talk about this? <laughs> Holy moly, hello, mister. Yeah, so these are loofahs. So basically loofah, you mean the thing that you clean your body with? Yes. So it will get really yellow and lightweight when it's all dry and the water kind of dries up. And then you just kind of unzip it. And then what I do is cut them the crazy thing about these, they cost you know pennies to grow, and I've been using the same dish sponge for 10 months from this. This is the passion fruit. Oh my gosh. If you like sour, then you'll really like them raw. 
Um, I like them in kombucha. Look at those juices. So, I don't think I've ever seen a real passion fruit. I hadn't either till last summer when we grew the first one. And how do you go about eating this? Do you scoop it out? Yeah, you can just kind of scrape the inside. And again, if you like that sweet and sour taste, then you can just chew it right up. The seeds are edible. A lot of my tropical fruits I like to use for kombucha because it's just the perfect blend. And so the guavas and the passion fruit. There we go. Ooh. Oh, baby. Oh. <laughs> I'll pour a glass for you and me. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Well, thank you all so much for coming along with us today as we made our homes both inside and outside more homey. Everyone, please stay safe out there and please stay at home if you can. I'll see you next Friday at noon.